You write, quote, I wonder if self-improving AGI might end up saturating physical environments with intelligence to such a degree that isolation of individual mental states becomes almost impossible. And the representations of all complex self-organizing agents merge permanently with each other. So that's a really interesting idea. This biological network, life network, gets so dense that it might as well be seen as one. That's an interesting, uh, what do you think that looks like? What do you think that saturation looks like? What does it feel like? I think it's a possibility. It's just a vague possibility. And I, I like to ex explain, but um, what this uh, looks like, I think that the end game of AGI is substrate agnostic. That means that uh, AGI ultimately, if it is being built, is going to be smart enough to understand how AGI works. Mm -hmm. This means it's not going to be better than people at AGI research and can take over in building the next generation, but it fully understands how it works and how it's being implemented. And also, of course, understands how computation works in nature, how to build new feedback loops that you can turn into your own circuits. And this means that the AGI is likely to virtualize itself into any environment that can compute. So it's not breaking free from the silicon substrate and is going to move into the ecosystems, into our bodies, our brains, and is going to merge with all the agency that it finds there. Yeah. So uh, it's conceivable that you end up with uh, completely integrated information processing across all computing systems, including biological computation on Earth. You, that we end up triggering some new step in the evolution where basically some Gaia is being built over uh, the entirety of all digital and biological computation. And um, if this happens, then basically... Uh, uh, everywhere around us, you will have agents that are connected and that are representing and building models of the world and their representations will physically interact. They will vibe with each other. And if uh, you find yourself into an environment, an environment that is saturated with um, modeling compute, where basically you uh, almost every grain of sand could part, be part of computation um, that is uh, at some point being started by the AI, um, you could find yourself in a situation where you cannot escape this shared representation anymore and where you indeed notice that everything in the world has one shared resonant model of everything that's happening on the planet and you notice which part you are in this thing and um, you become part of a very larger, almost holographic mind in which all the parts are observing each other and form a coherent whole. So you lose the ability to notice, to notice yourself as a, as a distinct entity. No, I think that when you're conscious in your own mind, you notice yourself as a distinct entity. You notice yourself as a self-reflexive observer. And uh, I suspect that we become conscious at the beginning of our mental development, not at some very high level. Consciousness seems to be part of a training mechanism that biological nervous systems have to discover to become trainable because you cannot take a nervous system like ours and to stochastic gradient descent is back propagation over 100 layers. Mm -hmm. This would not be stable on biological neurons. And uh, so instead, we start with some colonizing principle in which a part uh, of the mental representations form a notion of being a self-reflexive observer that is imposing coherence on its environment. And this spreads until the boundary of your mind. And if that boundary is no longer clear-cut, because uh, AI is jumping across substrates, uh, it would be interesting to see what a global mind would look like that is basically producing a globally coherent language of thought and is um, representing everything from all the possible vantage points. That's an interesting world. The intuition that this thing grew out of is a particular mental state, and it's a state that you find sometimes in literature, for instance. Neil Gaiman describes it in The Ocean at the End of the Lane, mm -hmm. and it's this idea that, or this experience, that there is a state in which you feel that you know everything that can be known, and that in your normal human mind, you've only forgotten. You've forgotten that you are the entire universe. And some people describe this um, after they've taken extremely large uh, amount of mushrooms or had a big spiritual experience uh, as uh, a hippie in their 20s, and they notice basically that they are in everything, and they're uh, their body is only one part of the universe and nothing ends at their body. And uh, 
actually everything is observing and they are part of this big observer and the big observer is focused uh, as one local point in their body and their personality and so on. But uh, we, we can basically have this oceanic state in which we have no boundaries and are one with everything. And um, a lot of meditators call this the non-dual state because you no longer have the separation between self and world. And as I said, you can explain the state relatively simply uh, without uh, panpsychism or anything else, but just by breaking down the uh, constructed boundary between self and world and our own mind. But if you combine this with the notion that uh, systems are physically interacting to the point where their representations are merging and interacting with each other, you would literally implement something like this. Mm -hmm. right? It would still be a representational state. You would not be one with physics itself. It would still be coarse-grained. It would still be much slower than physics itself. But, uh, but it would be a representation in which you um, become aware that you're part of some kind of global information processing system, mm -hmm. like thought and the global mind, and a conscious thought it's that, that coexisting with many other self-reflexive thoughts. Just, I would love to observe that from a video game design perspective, how that game looks. Maybe you will after we build AGI and it takes over. But would you be able to step away, step out of the whole thing, just kind of watch, you know, the way we can now, Sometimes when I'm at a crowded party or something like this, you step back and you realize all the different costumes, all the different interactions, all the different computation, that all the individual people are at once distinct from each other and at once all the same. But it's same. already what we do, right? We can have thoughts that are integrative and we have kind of thoughts that are highly dissociated from everything else yeah. and experience themselves as separate. Yeah. But you want to allow yourself to have those thoughts. Sometimes you kind of resist it. I think that uh, it's not normative. I want, it's more descriptive. I want to understand the space of states that we can be in and that people are reporting mm -hmm. and uh, make sense of them. It's not that I believe that uh, it's your job in life to get to a particular kind of state and then you get a high score. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you do. I, I think you're really against this high scoring thing. I kind of like yeah, it. Yeah, you're probably very competitive and I'm not. No, not competitive. <laughs> like role playing games, like Skyrim. It's not competitive. There's a, there's a nice thing, there's a nice feeling where your experience points go up. You're not competing against anybody, but it's the world saying, "You're on the right track." Here's a point. That's the game saying it. It's the game economy. And I found when I was playing games and was getting addicted to these systems, then I would get into the game and hack it. So I get control over the scoring system and would no longer be subject to it. So you're not no longer playing, you're trying to hack it. I don't want to be addicted to anything. Mm. I want to be in charge. I want to have agency over what I do. Ad addiction is the loss of control for you? Yes. Addiction means that you're doing something compulsively. Mm. And the opposite of free will is not determinism, it's compulsion. You don't want to lose yourself in the, in the addiction to something nice. Addiction to love, to the, to the pleasant feelings we humans experience. No, I find this uh, gets old. Hmm. It is, you, I don't want to have the best possible emotions. I want to have the most appropriate emotions. I don't want to have the best possible experience. I want to have an adequate experience that is serving my goals, the stuff that I find meaningful in this world.